In the world of sport, where victory is forever the ultimate goal, there exists a space reserved for a select few. Arsenal have gone through an entire league campaign without losing. The space, which resides in the history books and also within the hearts and minds of sports fans, is filled with the names of icons that have attained legendary status through an achievement that sets them apart from their rivals. And on the second time of asking, the flags go up and the All Blacks have their perfect year. It's an achievement so rare, it often comes around only once in a generation. Still undefeated, Mayweather! It is the attainment of perfection. On its budget, but the chip across to Kortos goes up, and what a try! The rejection of defeat, the rise of immortality. It is the title of undefeated. At the start of the 2015 season, only one team in the professional era had lifted the Curry Cup, having gone unbeaten throughout the entire competition. The Natal Sharks of Gary Teichman won all 15 games en route to being crowned 1996 Curry Cup champions. Over the ensuing 18 years, no other team, however dominant, managed to replicate this extraordinary feat. The 2015 edition of one of rugby's oldest competitions featured eight teams in the Premier Division with the defending champions, DHL Western Province, a young and talented Vodacom Blue Bull side, and the Xerox Golden Lions touted as early favourites to lift the iconic trophy at the end of October. Under head coach Johan Ackermann, the team from Johannesburg had made massive strides following their exclusion from Super Rugby in 2013. Even though the union lost a host of big-name players, the team immediately started their path to redemption by being crowned 2013 Vodacom Cup champions. They also came within touching distance of a second Carry Cup trophy in four years, following a narrow 1916 loss at Newlands in the 2014 final that saw Western Province claim their 33rd title. The 2015 Super Rugby season saw their best performance since the Lions franchise was formed in 2006, winning nine matches to finish eighth on the overall log and second in the South African Conference. There was thus ample reason for the team and its support base to feel boisterous about their chances heading into the Absa Curry Cup. Yeah, we were confident. Uh, we knew we were going to be tested in certain uh, specific positions, for example, at, at loose forward. Warren Whiteley was in the big uh, box squad. Warwick Tecklenburg decided to go to Japan for this period. And then uh, Derek Mini was out for the whole of the year. So suddenly there's three of your super rugby loose forwards out. And so we can carry on, you know, in total, taking in consideration the injuries that we also had, there was about 12, 13 players that was not available from the super rugby campaign. And therefore, in our hearts, we, you know, we always, uh, yes, we wanted to win the Curry Cup, but we knew it's going to be a big challenge. With regular captain Warren Whiteley away on Springbok duty, Ackerman had to find a new captain. Yeah, I think, you know, my, my philosophy on captaincy is easy. I think the guys, you know, look up to players that, that's willing to work hard and obviously got the leadership skills and Yaku ticks all the boxes, you know, same as with Warren. They, they, there's never a grey area with them. They're always honest, always hard working and the players respect them for what they've achieved. I think Yaku has shown us that you know the Lions is close to his heart and therefore it was an easy selection for me. For us, when, when he got appointed, all the, all the guys were, were happy and they just got behind him and got stuck in. And, and he, as a captain, leading by example, I mean, you can go watch his games. He was, he was massive for the side. Obviously, it's a lot of uh, responsibilities you, you get if you, if you say yes, but there was no doubt in my mind. It, uh, it's always been a dream of mine. I've been a Lions supporter since, uh, since I was eight years old, so it was a massive dream for me to come true. With pre-season preparations concluded, it was time for the first match of the competition, a tricky fixture against the Kings in Port Elizabeth. Any pre-season, it's always an uncertain period for coaches that you do enough, that you prepare well enough, that you had enough 
uh, time on the field, uh, will the guys be able to keep the intensity? And then the other factor was that we didn't, you know, know much about the Kings. In, and if I say that, we didn't play against them in Super Rugby. So it was a bit of an unknown factor. The Kings be forced to make a lot of tackles in this early stage of this game. The wide, wide play, you manage Nisi off to Cornbrick and he keeps the ball alive. Oh, fantastic skills of Nisi in space. Nisi in space, he's got four mink outside him and he gives the ball here. Yeah. Could be a try here. Yeah. Squawker Smith gets the first try for the Lions straight from the kickoff. Fantastic effort under a minute and the Lions are on the scoreboard. Yeah, and the Lions get going, a line out here, advantage being played. Kornas got some beautiful feet from him. Advantage over. He's going, he's going. And he gets the try. Kornas got some. But Ross Cronier, plenty of opportunity. The big man, Timothy Agava, comes in here. And Haurum Nisi again into space. Look at that. No defenders. Cronier waiting. Slow ball. Look at that. Sells the dummy. And Kwaka Smith gets try number two. And the forwards coming around the corner. Jakob's off to the reserve hooker, Kutsia. And look at that. Kwaka Smith straightens up the line. Runs on a weak shoulder and gets the try. Yeah, and that's a better scrum here. Yeah. Kwaka Smith decides to go. Jakob van der Waal. And off to Anthony Forming. Does he have the power? A fantastic performance from the Golden Lions. Away from home. 51 points to 14 against the Kings. We had, you know, um, great ambition for, for the campaign and having a good start like that was, was just, uh, you know, um, a, a, a good like, platform for us. That first 20 minutes was some of the best rugby we played and, and that set the, the tone for the rest of the season. The first home match of the campaign saw another great performance by the team as they saw off the Pumas by 44 points to 27. It's four stuck with some space. Advantage over. Oh, he's got some space as he holds and can he make the line? Yes, he can. Harold Forster had all the Pumas defenders going the wrong way. Well, they're holding steady at the moment. Now the scrum gives way. And penalty try it is. Good take by Trinia. Now away for Pombrook. This is the Lions with a little bit of space. Kossan. Oh, got away from his man. Now, can he beat the man on the inside? Yes, he can. Kortnos Kossan. Away by uh, Riedlinghaus. And now chance here down that right flank. And it's a beautiful pass in, but Mastu couldn't hold on. Penalty try again. Intentional knockdown. Got them straight down. He's waiting for a runner, and it came in the form of Stokus Anakov, who races away, much to the delight of the crowd. So the Lions are victorious, 44 to 27. The unbeaten start to the season was in jeopardy during week three against the Sharks in Durban, as the visitors trailed by 16 points to 10, with only 15 minutes remaining in the match. Influential scrum of Ross Grenier kick-started the fight back. Good strike. Lions. It's available for Ross Crenier at the base. But that's the Sol's a dummy. Ross Crenier. It opens up on front foot. Good support from Gorka Smith. The offload to Bosom. Bosom stock is on it. I just play the situation pretty much. I'm trying to give our backs quick ball. I mean, we're doing ex extremely wide, well out wide. Uh, and quite fortunately for myself, the, the gap opened up and then I just managed to take it, which was awesome. Having regained the lead, the Golden Lions put their foot on the accelerator. All the Lions remain unbeaten after three rounds of the FC Carry Cup. Trenier breaks away. Ross Trenier, we're looking for support. Scotland on the outside, doesn't need him, finds Combrick. Combrick puts the burners down. Scotland, he's big, he's strong. Oh, what a handoff, what a score. Getting the channel. One and channel three ball, just clean ball for, for the backs. That stands and skip pass, and his first contribution. Anthony Foreman with the bonus point try. And that's it. Golden Lions victorious away from home by 31 points to the Sharks, 16.
Preparations for their next assignment, an away fixture against the Steel Pumas, took a turn for the worst when Captain Yaku Kriel sustained a quadricep injury during training. Ross Grenier was handed the captaincy as the Xerox Golden Lions look to maintain their perfect start to the competition. Taken quickly, Kutsia, oh, hand in there. He's going under the sticks. He's going under the sticks as Prolet got to get a penalty try. Grenier, a long range drop goal. He's thumped this well. It really is a good looking kick. It's a successful one. What a drop goal that is by Marnitz Boschel. Easily taken, and here's the rolling mall with Parker Smith at the back there. He will break away, and they're making an equitable progress to the line. It's unstoppable. What a score! Wow, Whoa, that is so word. impressive. You know, I think specifically that mall, you know, it's one of those that any forward coach, you know, train over and over, and then one day it all fits together like a glove, and it's almost like I think like a only one for a golfer, you know. And we'll set again and use some of the bulk. Marks. Van Royen. And he's over. A third try for the Lions. The winning of the line out by Franco Mostert. Now will they maul it up? Marks is at the back there. The progress towards the line is inevitable. Quaffer Smith. Can he get in for another? Yes, he does. The bonus point try for the Lions. Mission accomplished here in Nelspreit. The only blight on an otherwise dominant performance was the fact that prolific fly-half Marinitz Bosov had missed his first kick at goal, a full four matches into the competition. I, I practiced hard. I worked hard on it. Um, I set myself some personal goals, and um, my goals was to not like take it game for game and not miss a, a kick in a game. And it happened against the Pumas where, where I kicked one against the post. So the monkey was off the back a bit, but um, I kept focusing on each game. Yeah. Following a comfortable 37-21 win over the Kings in Johannesburg, the scene was set for the biggest clash of the competition thus far. A top of the table, high felt derby between two unbeaten teams, the Vodacom Blue Bulls and the Xerox Golden Lions. We knew it was going to be a big game and up to, up to then uh, we didn't play our best rugby um, of the season and I, I believe in that, in that game we played the best first half that uh, any team could play in a, in a curry cup. It proved to be one of the matches of the season. Grenier, here's the ball. Ball, side. On the defence, Marnitz brush up at the chip across to Kortos Kassan. And what a try! What a magnificent start for the visitors. Ian Kortnos spoke in the week, and um, as you're analysing players, then I normally see some space. And as we were getting the momentum, I just saw Kortnos' hand sticking up, so I knew if, if I get this pinpoint, you will, you will definitely score. Again, one of those ones that you just you see it on, because there was no one in front of me. I mean, I had about we had a three-man overlap, but I just saw no one in front of me, and I just called in, and Bossy just put a perfect kick in for me to just collect and go over the top line. Leading by 30 points to nil as halftime approached, the game was seemingly in the bag. The Blue Bulls, however, had other ideas. Here's a break from Gallant. He's got a Lingo on his outside. Here's a flying winger. Bosho chases. But a Lingo makes no mistake. Another chance here for the Bulls. Rulof Smith. Picked up by Butter. And he rambles his way over the chalk. Come on, gets it back once more. Big one to Sneeman. Stechman. Sneeman assists. Stechman right there. But held just short. The ball eventually rolls over the line. Come off, gets the ball back. Goes blind. Clean to in his outside. Gallant with the kick. Tries to regather. Gallant. Gallant kicks ahead. Belingo in the corner. Oh, my word. Oh, 
Joseph with the kick. And it's over. The Lions fans in ecstasy. The Blue Bulls 28, the Golden Lions 36. A win for the visitors. We were frustrated the way we just, the mistakes we made, the intensity that we lacked. We couldn't believe that the guys thought the game was won because obviously the Bulls is too good a side to, to go there and think you can just play for 40 minutes. I really believe that was a massive learning curve for every single guy in that team. Just shows you um, no matter where you're playing or when you're playing, um, the, it's a game of two halves and you can't switch off. And I believe we, we went to, into the second half uh, too relaxed and we, we tried to defend the lead. Uh, and that's not how you play rugby. You must play rugby for 18 minutes. And uh, I believe the second half, we just didn't play rugby. And uh, fortunate, uh, we were far enough ahead to pull, pull through the game. At the end of the day, uh, looking back at it now, you know, uh, a less composed side would probably would have lost that game. And the guy showed a lot of composure to, to pull that game through. The thrilling victory over the Vodacom Blue Bulls extending the Xerox Golden Lions lead at the top of the log to four points with six of the ten pool matches completed. After the break, the push for the APSA Curry Cup semi-finals is on as the Golden Lions face the most challenging part of the pool phase. But first, some insights into the role of attacking coach Swayze De Bruyne, who has been Jan Ackermann's right-hand man since they joined the franchise in 2013. Swayze is, is, is a very emotional guy, so he brings passion and, and emotion and, you know, excitement to the group. And then, you know, he's, got, he's been in rugby for a long time, so he's got a lot of knowledge of his own. There's a lot of things that he's, he brought to the attack since he joined the, the Lions that and I think, you know, he's great for the players. Coach Swayze definitely thinks out the box. I mean, he comes with these funny drills that I've never done before in my life. And, and every day it's something different. Yeah, he's very unpredictable. He likes, you know, um, the flair. He enjoys, you know, a good attacking side. And he, he kind of takes off the shackles from, from all the players. You know, like, he, he's the type of player, uh, the type of coach that will actually instill faith in, 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 in each player's ability to make sure that you bring out the best in, 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 in yourself. A fantastic character and just so passionate about the game of rugby and thinks outside of the box. I'm never inside the box and he encourages the players to do that as well, which is fantastic for us. My whole philosophy is, uh, is, 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 is to look for space and to beat players and to attack, that's simple. And we build it around that and, uh, and, and, and have a lot of fun around that. And, and play and don't overcoach and overstructure and forcing your methods down onto the players. I think my, my history as a, as, as, a, as a coach as well, we didn't always win, but we always had fun. You know, I still think it's important. It's a job for us, but you gotta have fun. We love it every moment. With six matches in the pool phase of the 2015 APSA Curry Cup completed, the Xerox Golden Lions were still unbeaten and within touching distance of a semi-final berth. With no bye weeks scheduled, a key part of the season is player management as injuries start taking their toll within the squad. Player rotation is therefore a vital component to the coaching style of Johan Ackermann. You know, we work closely with the under-21 age group and then obviously in our squad as a whole, we make quite used to, to alternate the players, get them used to the to how we want to play. So although maybe like a guy like Lawrence Erasmus didn't play a lot for us in Super Rugby, he was quite familiar with, with our plays. Each individual got his own skill that makes him a, a quality player. So where you lose maybe in the one department of, of a player getting injured, you gain in the other sense. And, and that's, I think, the good thing about the squad is that, you know, with us, it's all about the team. It's not about the individual. Uh, but when you get that opportunity, you, you must grab it. Next up for Johan Ackermann's charges was a home fixture against the South Sea Sharks. Kronje, Benissi, Erasmus, 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 he deserves a try! Lawrence Erasmus, what a game! What a game for the number four line, for the Golden Lions, 
Jones, he scores his try. Boss off. Howard and Nisi. Lovely angle from Stockies High Court. It's all golden lines at the moment. It's Kondo. Skasar has got over for a superb score. Just like you said, Butch. Wall chip and chase from Joe Peterson. How's the bounce? Good for Paul Yodon. Paul Yodon. Kondo Skasar fires up. The offload to Joe Peterson was superb. Peterson, Peterson, he should be in, he's in. What a score. And it's the, the Golden Lions that continue their march at the top of the EFSA Curry Cup table. The victory over the Sharks extending the team's lead at the top of the table to eight points as they booked their place in the semi-finals with three rounds still remaining. But even as Golden Lions fans were already contemplating a home semi-final, the team itself could not afford the luxury of looking too far ahead with two tough fixtures to negotiate. A matchup with the dangerous Toyota Free State Cheetahs in Bloemfontein, followed by a clash with the defending champions at Emirates Airline Park. Worked out to Trenier. Now the lovely ball away for, uh, for Kombrink. Kombrink making ground. Oh, and he finds Kassan. This is exciting. Kassan goes for it through the tackle, looking on the inside. Kassan! Trunia, Bosov. Nisi, with a bit of space was there. Oh, it should be easy finish. Try number two for Kortnils, Kassan. Tackle only. Away there by Pusia to Kombrink. Right up to the players, Erasmus. Now quick ball for Whiteley. Beautiful pass. And in they run for their third try. Trill sitting on 16 tries in his career. Mostert leading the pack. Here they go, here they go. Look for Yaku Trill. There it is. Lovely little ball there by Marks for uh, Mostert. One of the players has stayed down on the cheetah side. Bosov, pace and uh, agility. Gets it away, Kronier, Messi. And Messi scores. Kronier for uh, Marks gets rid of one tackler. And woof, he's so nearly over the whitewash there. Kronier still working that side. Whiteley. Whiteley, lovely ball on the inside. Here goes Yaku Kiel. Try number two for the skipper. Whiteley gets the touch. Advantage. Trunier. Red. Whiteley again. Riedling House, Munisi. Now for the vault. Breaks a tackle. Oh, this is all too simple. Big scrum. Boss off. Hands through the tackle, Manisi. Oh, and the pick up and go by the ever present Koffer Smith. Manisi for Munk, Anthony for Munk. That's try number 10. And uh, at the moment, just running the cheetahs ragged, I'm afraid. Yeah, it was sometimes almost uh, surreal. I couldn't believe it, the score. What happened with this team, once they get going, and, and in the confidence they have, they seem not to stop. And uh, they, like, they seem to like when the knife is in us, not to pull it out, but to turn it. And, and it was fantastic to see. Welcome back to Emirates Airline Park for the Sapsa Curry Cup Clash between the Golden Lions and the defending champions, Western Province. Kronia pops it out to Marx. Kronolon, he's a metre away. Kronia, and they manage to hold on, does Lawrence Erasmus. Good yeah, yeah, playing yeah. scrum off. Redling ace. Nisi, he finds Krill. Gets boss two. The flanker slits the twilight. Grunia. Another break here for the Lions. This time, Lawrence Erasmus, the try scorer. Brought down by Colby. 22 meters out, picked up by Wagley. Gets it out to Bushoff. He sees a clear run for the line and makes no mistake. Most 
Rusbitz, the general of the Lineart. And it goes to Rasmus. Taps it down. And it finds Forming. Taken down by yeah, Notche. Yeah, lots of men on his outside. Gets it out to Marks. And Nisi gets back to and he canters over the try line. Grenier. Bosch off. And Nisi gets it out to Kutia. Gets back to and he touches down in the corner as the Lions get try number six. Whiteley. Grenier. Goes blind to Nisi. Superb performance from the home team. I think we just hit our stripes that time of the season, so that's where we started to really get together, you know, get all this stuff working for us and all of that. And the motivation was there because we never, we never went into a game where there's no motivation. Everyone always wanted to prove a point, you know, always wanted to do something good for the team. And if you have 15 or 22 guys doing that, that's the kind of results that you end up with. The demolition of the defending champions meant that top spot on the log as well as a home semi-final had been locked down, with the final round of pool matches still to be played. This afforded coach Ackerman the luxury of resting a host of players for the team's final fixture against the Greekers at Emirates Airline Park. Ricky Schroeder, Van der Vault. Lovely work here. The little switch is beautiful. Oh to Mustard. Mustard's going to go all the way in. What work by Vernon Willis and Sampi Mustard. By the vault. Let's get forward to Quaker Smith. Breaks the first tackle, breaks the second. He's got great speed as Quaker Smith. Seven specialists and he's good with ball in hand. He's a flanker that runs like a centre. Ryan Jorkovs takes it quickly. The wild ball to Yaku van der Vold. He's got to get the south line. He has He's to got players it. out there. They need to straighten. This is Van der Willis. Willis going on the outside, looking inside for the big man. Ryan Janssen van Rensburg. The inside ball to Sampi Mustard. He's less than a metre. The off line is good. What a try for Jacques now. Freiling. Fillion. Schreef. Schreef. Loses the ball. Bounce it. It's now. Still a in the win bar, that's 29 points to 19. Golden Lions win this game. The Golden Lions youngsters ensuring that the team ended the pool phase with its eighth bonus point victory. With a massive points differential and more than 50 tries scored in only 10 matches, the team from Johannesburg were outright favorites to lift the trophy at season's end. Their semi-final opponents, the Toyota Free State Cheetahs, had snuck into the playoffs by erasing a 14-point deficit in the final five minutes to claim an exhilarating draw with the South Sea Sharks in their final pool match. Even so, their final tally of 24 log points was only half of the 48 amassed by the Xerox Golden Lions and therefore few gave them a chance of upsetting the red-hot favourites at Emirates Airline Park. Fenter again. It's all cheaters at the moment. Losing a little momentum there, but Fenter keeps it going. All fronts off Fenter. He's had a great season. Goes all the way. Brilliant play by the center. Mostert makes the clean catch. Now here goes the ball, and it's on the rumble. It's on the rumble and over. I would think it's probably Yaku Kriel. Right, now this is good. Remain 10. Well, it's one counter more by the Lions has been pretty good. Now, can the Cheetahs reply? They've got it on the move. Are there enough guys in the Lions that mall there? They've got it very nearly over the line. And in goes uh, Raymond Rule and Dave Brenton. Swill is in possession. And the try is given. 
Trailing by 16 points to 13 at halftime, the coach had some stern words with his young charges. It was a, it was one a, a team talk that I said, you know, guys, this is not what we stand for. This is not the character that this team has shown the whole season. Uh, are we going to, you know, let the season stop yet today? As the game opened up in the second half, it became clear that neither team was going to go down without a fight. Fournier steps on the inside. Erasmus has got long legs, all two meters of him. Here he goes, here he goes. A little dummy, a little dummy extends those massive legs of his and gets his second try for the Golden Lions. Now Marin, lovely pass out for Fenta, great tackle for Nia, when could and low, now, ooh, yeah, well, Sergio Peterson gets rid of one, oh, and couldn't get rid of, brilliant pick up by Ulefir, Gerard Ulefir, the Lions pile on the pressure, but Fenta gets, Marin, little dummy, try, Neil Marin, to Nia again. They go on the short side, then they go with a man on that short side. They lack it on the far side crowd. Uh, yes, Marius. That ball was not grounded. Well, there's a tough, tough call against the cheaters here. Yeah. Number six, no release and not slowing the ball down. Not release and slowing the ball down. Look at this, a power. Scrum by the Lions and it doesn't well. They've got a foot on it, they've got a foot on penalty try. Penalty try for the Lions takes them into the lead. Fenter again. Sean has to go. Benjamin can't go anywhere. Now Raymond Drew. Sergio Peterson. Lovely step by him. Got men on the inside. Look at this. Yes, he ever son races it in. And the Cheetahs are back in the lead. With just over 10 minutes to go and facing a three-point deficit, the home side's perfect season was in danger of falling apart at the second last hurdle. I was very, very, and Akers and all of us, we, that game we were worried because we know, we know we're just humans. And, and, uh, we almost got ahead of ourselves. We looked at each other, myself and Swayze, and thought, is this, is this one of those days where everything that you try is not going to work out? With the entire season on the line, the Golden Lions needed an act of inspiration to lift the team. In their biggest moment of strife, it was their captain who took the lead. This is Kassar, away there for Ruan Yatsa from Wednesday. Now, he keeps in field. Oh, look at this. Look at this for the captain. Look at that. Yaku Creole has the crowd in absolute raptures. He's got that X factor. And that's, I think, the main thing about Yaku. And he can, you know, do something out of nothing when you at least expect it. And again, that was a simple counter attack. And he, and he uh, bounced two guys and he, and he went and scored a try that just lifted the morale. Luckily, and uh, I, I trust the Lord and a lot of my decisions that. You know, he, he gave me that wisdom to make Yaku captain, and that's why the, the players will follow Yaku. You know, he's an inspirational player on the field. That is Yaku Creole. Why he's such an inspirational leader. He leads like a, by example. It's not go, guys. I'll see you there. It's come, boys, fourth May. So whenever the the pressure is up, he just he just takes you forward. You don't think in that moment. Uh, you're so conditioned what to do, when to do it, and ten minutes to go, you're pretty tired. And I was just in the right time at the right place. I didn't even think I was going to score that try when I came to the 22 meter line because there was a whole line of cross defenders. And in that situation, you just back yourself, and it, it really, it really happened for me in that game. The home side did not relinquish their lead again as they overcame a valiant cheetah side. I wouldn't say it was an off day. I would just say the Cheetahs really came out for us. We put 70 points on them the game before and they came to, to prove a point now. Two years back, we probably would have lost that game and because of the experience we have and the senior players, um, guys who have gone through situations like that, we managed to pull it back. Having played together for a while and knowing each other's characters, we, every time we went behind the poles, we knew exactly what to do when we 
when we have a kickoff or we, we, we go back into the game, we knew exactly what we had to do to win that game. Latitos played very, very good rugby um, in that semi-final. Um, in the game, for us, we, we never thought that um, the momentum is so much against us that we, we can't pull it through. The belief in the guys was massive this whole season. So for us, just keeping calm and keeping cool and, and know what to do, when to do it, and just keep on um, hitting the rock. And luckily, we, we, we came through the semi-final, and I knew if we went through the semi semi-final, the final was going to be a massive effort from the guys. DHL Western Province's victory over the Vodacom Blue Bulls in the other semi-final meant that it would be a repeat of the 2014 Curry Cup final with the only difference, the venue. After the break, we head to Emirates Airline Park for the final showdown of the 2015 AFSA Curry Cup season. First though, we hear what influence Coach Johan Ackermann has had on the Golden Lions' success. Of course, it's just unreal. I think... Uh... Apart from being a brilliant coach, uh, his, 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 his people skills and, 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 and his faith and he's a man of God and it, he just installs a wonderful, wonderful uh, feeling and, and ethos under every one of us. So for me, to be his right hand man is really an honour. He really just does his thing and he's true to what he do and true to what he say. And that's the respect he, he gains from the players and automatically that shows out on the field. You don't want to disappoint your coach. He gets to know you on a personal level as well, so he knows what kind of player you are. I and mean, we do have freedom. So that's the nice thing for us is to know that, you know, like I said, we have the backing of the coach. So I don't have to go on the field and go try and be someone else. I can just be Gordon Scorsi. I think firstly, as a, as a player, when you have a coach that has been there, He's put a Springbok jersey on, he's played for this province, he's played for the Lions. You automatically have a lot of respect for him. He's been in your shoes, he understands. And he brings that understanding in his coaching as well. His, his player ma uh, management is second to none. Um, he is by far the pe best coach I've worked under. Uh, he knows the game very well. In fact, I've been fortunate to work with some top name coaches, but I think Akers has got the number. He's, he's special. He's, he's, uh, I think he's number one. Not think, he is number one. It's great and an honor to hear that. But, uh, you know, all I can do is, you know, I want to treat the players as I would have liked to be treated as a player. And that, that's simple. So, you know, I, don't, I care for the players. And um, I've learned a lesson when I was playing at the Lions under Laurie Mainz. Laurie Mainz, we were talking after a game, I said to him, you know, Coach Laurie, you know, what's, what's the most difficult for a thing to coach if you've got all the Springbok players that we had then? And, and he said to me, you know, it's obviously it's to, to create the environment where people want to be. And I think that was always my aim when I took over to create that environment where the people want to be. You know? Having remained unbeaten throughout the pool phase and after downing a determined Toyota Free State cheetah side in the semi-final, the Xerox Golden Lions were only a victory away from claiming their 11th AFSA Curry Cup title. Standing in their way was a familiar foe, DHL Western Province. In fact, only 12 months earlier, the men from Cape Town had handed the Lions a heart-wrenching defeat at Newlands to deny them a second title in four years. Well, what absolute drama we have. Marnitz Bossoff has missed three penalties. Time is up on the clock. This to take us into extra time in the Curry Cup final. He's missed it. And Western Province are Curry Cup champions. For the second time in three years, they lost out to the home final a year ago to the Sharks. Wonderful touch from the Golden Lions players who are quickly over to Marnitz Bossov. He's been such a fabulous player for them. They're not going to let him shoulder all the responsibility after that last gasp kick. Scenes of utter elation for this Western Province team. 
for every player that played in that final in 2014. You you will remember the the, the pain you had after the game, the hard soul you had after the game. And, uh, I believe that's a feeling that's going to stick with me forever. Looking to go one step further this time round, the build-up to the final focused on staying true to the tried and tested methods followed during the season. Uh, we didn't tweak anything at all. We, 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 every meeting was on the same time as it was for 11 weeks. Every uh, session was at the same time. The gym, uh, the intensity of the trainings, everything, you know, we, we kept it as it was a normal pool game. And I think that was the secret. To We didn't build the game up more than what it was. I believe this year we were a lot calmer before the, the final. Home ground advantage also played a part because we, know, we knew we were playing in the high fold, we knew we were playing, you know, most of the, um, the conditions favour us, you know, um, playing so early in the day as well, uh, just favoured us that much more. Um, the experience from the previous Curry Cup or final that we played in, down in, in Cape Town actually helped us a lot. There'd also be no change to the style of rugby that had swept all before them for the previous 11 weeks. Any sport, uh, sportsmen know when they play in a final, you know, that's the game that you have to perform and there's a trophy for your, that's the price at the end. So we were quite adamant that we're going to keep everything the same and let, you know, let on the day just uh, trust the guys to perform well. Coach Aki's told us uh, the, the whole week, uh, listen, yeah, this kind of rugby brought us into a final. There's no reason for us to change anything we do because we're so familiar with it and everybody knows what to do. And I believe that helped us a lot because that, that, bring, like, that brings like a calmness over the players. Just telling them, listen, yeah, do what you do, play your game, play what you see. And just it's just a freedom you get when you run out to, onto the field and do what you do. And that freedom to excel was evident for all to see, as the Xerox Golden Lions dominated from the start. Well, a wonderful view of the Ellis Park precinct as the crowd start uh, pouring into the situation here at Emirates Park. When the stadium is full, it's absolutely fabulous. The Xerox Golden Lions against DHL Western Province, a repeat of last year's final. Trinier for Creole, now Borsov making some ground. And look at this, bursting through the tackle, goes Jansa van Rijsden, looking around. Oh, hold on too long, but a beautiful bit of following up by Kutsia, the full-back. Kroniak should uh, commit runners here to the ball. They were inside the Western Province 22 now. Borsov waiting for Whitey. The step and go! Whitey! When I scored that try, I think they were, I probably showed a bit more emotion than, than what I usually show. It was just because I knew how important the start was for us against them and, and how crucial it was to, um, to just put us on the front foot and, and Province on the back foot. Well, Kozo, who won in South African under 20 colours, went playing for the Blue Bulls. Turnover, Gap, oh, Russ was really thick on the inside. Morstead couldn't get the pass up. Picked up by Erasmus again. Not a bad little ball over the top there for Kutsia. Kutsia still going. Somebody's got a bit of clock. It comes for Fulman. And then away it's Ross Grenier. Who gets his first try of the Absa Curry Cup season. And what a time he has won it is for the home side. Now it's Janssen van Rensburg. He's a big lad, as we often say. Now, Kunia goes and passes his way over the line. Is it a try? Yes, it is. That's the Russia Benga awards the try. Cheapest. I mean, I'm, I'm not one who scores many tries, but the, the opportunity presented itself. I'm just used to uh, putting other guys in gaps and, and letting them take, take the glory, but to score two tries in the final is. Unbelievable. I mean, thinking about it now, I still get goosebumps. The home side racing to a 19-point lead with a brand of rugby that was not in keeping with normal finals rugby fair. 
Yeah, we've got a thing called Lion Style and, you know, we, we stick to what we do. We always stick to our processes, we always do what we do, we never change, doesn't matter what comes. We always adapt, but we don't change whatever we do. Yeah, I think what, what happened to this team, it's an interesting team, this. We've tried at stages to kick it, and even at stages where we wanted to be more conservative because of our, our, what we stand for, the guys just ran. And the lesson we learned from last year's final is there, I think, I don't think I know, at stages we sort of went conservative. Uh, uh, and I think it's a, a lot of sport, sportsmen in, in big games f fall into that trap. The defending champions, however, weren't going to give up their crown without a fight. Broom de Pierre decides a rubber de Pierre forces his way over. What a way to finish the half because it's a half that hasn't really gone for the young fly half. But that will change the complexion completely. 22 10 in favor of the home side at half time. The coach knew, however, that the game was not won yet. We said, guys, let's reset. Let's go back to 0 0. Let's keep doing what we're doing. Um, play with intensity. And then, obviously, we've got 40 minutes left of the campaign before we can be Carry Cup champions. Uh, the one thing that we were. Ca we knew is that the province is going to come out with a bang and the credit to them, they did come out with a bang um, you know, and, and made a, a big game of it. Voss off and now we've got power away is Janser van Rensburg, the young waterproof graduate, South African schools, Blue Bulls Craven Week, South African under 20 and now a try for the Lions in the Absa Curry Cup. gets away from the first and had to dive into the 22 meter area of the Back province line. to keep the momentum going. This is Nizam Khan, good step in, time, he's well over, surely that is a try for Nizam Khan. And again the Lions look for the sack now, the penalty advance is not there, great try province. And not out of it yet. Gee, folks, are we sensing something here from Western Province? The momentum firmly with the visitors as they close the gap to only eight points with 15 minutes left on the clock. Once again, the composure and commitment of the Golden Lions was being tested. This team matured a lot. And uh, if you see, if you know where we started a few years back, and uh, this, they, they're not scared of pressure. That's one thing that, that we picked up and, and they'll just never die. We had more experience than province and we, and we knew that would, that would tell. They've got a lot of talented youngsters, we knew that. But we had the experience and that counts for a lot in finals rugby and I think that's, that's definitely what pulled us through. And Russ Pernier gets it back to the side. Who boots it into the crowd, boots it up into road Why? and the celebrations begin. I can't tell you how badly I want to, to win this game and, and give something back to the wonderful support that we've, we've got from our supporters and, and also to us as a team who, who've really worked hard for, for this for the last couple of years and, and the ups and downs we've, we've been through. The Curry Cup is something special in this country. It's something that every coach strives for. And it was just, it was weird. I, we just straight away thanked the Lord for the opportunity that he gave us to, that we can play and be part of such a fantastic bunch of, of, of men that went, that went all the way and just never, never, never gave in. It's something you always dream of as a little boy and um, for us as a team lifting the cup and we know how hard we worked for it, um, it was just massive. I think emotions went all over the place and um, doing it with this special bunch of players was, was awesome for us. After the game I was absolutely shattered. I was bugged, I had bumps and bruises and cuts on my face and, but I didn't notice any of it when that final whistle went and I was just ecstatic. I mean, I actually can't remember, I must have blacked out. It was just one of the best feelings I have ever had in my life. Yeah, I was just grateful of, of being in the Curry Cup final. You know, it's one of the, the greatest competitions in the world, and just to be able to be part of it 
let alone you know just winning the trophy. You know, it's, it was you know it was immense and it was a great achievement for myself, a great achievement for the for the team uh, and the whole of Golden Lions rugby. That was for me, it was a sweet moment, you know, against Western Province. Obviously last year we had a bit of a, you know, we felt bad after that final that we lost in Cape Town. So that was really a sweet feeling for us to get that cup at our home ground. It was just an amazing feeling. Uh, afterwards, I couldn't even say a decent speech because there was so much emotions going around. And it wasn't an 80 minute effort. It was an effort coming from 2013 all the way to, to 2015 with all its, its highs and lows. So all that emotion came down on you at once and it was just an amazing feeling. Uh, lifting the cup at the end uh, with your teammates that, that went through, through all of it with you. Just, it, it's just uh, the love between the guys, it's just amazing. Uh, there's no feeling like that. The Xerox Golden Lions, you are the champions for 2015. Congratulations, please come forward. For the 11th time, the APSA Curry Cup would call Emirates Airline Park its home for the year. What made the season even more significant was the fact that the team had gone unbeaten, a feat that had not been accomplished since 1996. Personally, I didn't even think of that, you know, for us it was just to win the final, but I mean afterwards now it's hitting you to think like, yo, it hasn't been done in a long time, so I think it's really special for a team, you know, to achieve something like that. But it's a lot of a lot of people, you know, not just the team and the results, that's obviously, a, a, they, they created that, but there's a lot of, you know, people behind the scenes that must get credit for that, for the work that went in. Most definitely a collective effort, a collective effort of, you know, your CEO, your equity partner, your fund, Altman Olives, um, your staff that worked tremendously hard through the season, and we often refer to them as the backroom boys. Um, but they're the guys that really keep the wheels turning for that team to go out on, on the field Saturday after Saturday. It was really a big squad effort and I'm so proud of the guys for, for standing for each other, for that brotherhood that they, that, that they never let go. And that, uh, yes, I can't say how proud of I, I am of the guys, it was just an amazing feeling. For the Lions, it has been a hard but rewarding journey back from the disappointment of Super Rugby relegation in 2013, built on an ethos of camaraderie. Well, I think it's, it's a family virtue that we try to, to bring out amongst our players, amongst our staff, is that we care for one another. Uh, probably the catalyst was we were eliminated from the Super 15 in 2013. We lost a lot of sponsors, we lost a lot of... Uh, players, I think there's about 20 players that left our ranks at that stage, and we just decided we have to make something of what we have. We, we went home base, we worked with what we had, we often referred to ourselves as a no-name brand. Uh, I think things have somewhat changed. We wanted people to remember this team, not for winning or losing, but a character team, a team that played an exciting brand of rugby and almost thrilled our, our fans and, and frightened our enemies sort of thing. And, uh, and, and, and that, that, that's, that was special with this team. We play for each other, we enjoy each other. I, I can't explain it, I can't put it in words, but you, you can just feel the vibe. Every time you go into, into training, you go into the change room, you go into, onto the field, you know, there's just this vibe that's there and you, you just want to be part of it. You never feel like you're lost. You always feel part of something, something bigger than just yourself. And I think that's the amazing thing about the Lions. We, we're not playing just to play rugby. We're playing to inspire, you know, we're playing to change a nation. You know, we, 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 there's, there's more than just the game. And that's the nice thing about the Lions. That's why I'm so privileged to be part of this team. With a talented group of players playing an exciting brand of rugby and bonded by a sense of brotherhood, the future looks bright for the team from the City of Gold. As long as we inspire each other every day as, as people and you know, live our talents that God gave us, then I'll, I'll be happy. Whatever the future holds for the men in red and white, the class of 2015 will have their names forever etched in the history books of South African rugby. Undefeated APSA Curry Cup champions.